Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,397. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1,396 to 97, so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we got to talk more about running total calculation and percent of running total calculation and the ogive chart, also known as a percent cumulative frequency chart. Now, in our last video, 1396, we saw how to do these calculations with a pivot table. In this video, we're going to see how to calculate the actual running total and percent running total with formulas. And then we're going to see how to create the chart. Now, back in the pivot table video, we saw how to do running total and percent running total. And the pivot table is much easier than the formula solutions. Now, the reason that you'd want to do formulas is if you want your report linked to the source data. So when the source data changes, it instantly updates. Then that's a good use for formulas. Not only that, but if you have a series of calculations made with a pivot table and you tried to highlight just two of the columns to make a chart, that doesn't work when you're using a pivot table. But for formulas, we can make whatever formulas we want and highlight whichever columns we want and make a chart. Now, last video, we talked in great detail about when you can have a running total or a percent running total. And in both examples we did in the last video, we had a lower and upper limit. And we need to first count, for, in our case, how many quantities fell between the lower limit, 51, and the upper limit, 100. Then we need our cumulative total, or running total, and percent cumulative. All right, let's go over to the sheet 1397 formula and see how to do this. Now, the first thing I did was I looked through the quantity column and calculated the min and the max. Because if I'm going to create categories with a lower and upper, all of the categories together better cover all of the quantities that we have. Now, I have a little assumption table, or start in our increment. So equal sign will start at 1, Enter. And I always need to add 50. So equals relative cell reference 1 above plus the increment. And I'll use the F4 key to lock it. Control Enter to put the formula in the cell. And then point to that fill handle. And when I see my crosshair or angry rabbit, I can click and drag. So there are the lower limits. Now we need to get the upper limit. Equal, and I'm using my arrow key, left arrow there. I'll take whatever the lower is plus, whoops, the increment. That would give me one too many. I'm still going to hit F4, but then subtract one. I could have put 49 over here, but I'll leave it as an increment of 50. Control Enter, and now I can double click with my Angry Rabbit and copy it all the way down. That knew how to copy all the way down because it kept looking. And when it saw nothing, it stopped right there. Now, if we wanted a category label in our chart, we could make a text formula. Equal sign, I'm going to click on the lower. And now I need a dash, and then I need the upper. So to create a text formula and join things, I use the ampersand, Shift 7. Now I need a dash. I can't just type a dash. I have to make sure and put it in double quotes. So double quotes, space, dash, space, then I end double quote. And there's three characters within double quotes. So every formula as I copy this down will have a space, dash, and space. And then I join that text to the upper. Now I Control Enter and double click and send it down. Of course, you could see that this is considered text because it's aligned to the left. These, of course, are numbers aligned to the right. Now, when I get to frequency, there's actually two different formulas we can use. And I'm going to show you both of them. The first one is anytime we're counting anything, and for us, we have two conditions. I need to look through this column and find any quantity and count it if it's greater than or equal to the lower and less than or equal to the upper. Anytime we're counting with conditions, we can use the count ifs function. Now, criteria range, that needs the entire column of quantity. So I'm going to click in the top cell. Control Shift down arrow to jump all the way to the bottom. F4 key to lock it, putting the dollar signs in. So as I copy down, it's locked. 
notice F4 jumps the screen back up to comma. Now, criteria. I need the comparative operator greater than or equal to, and I need the lower limit. Now, the way COUNTIFS works is you have to put your comparative operator in double quotes. So double quote, greater than or equal to. Now, there's no such thing as a single operator that means greater than or equal to like there is in math. You have to type two characters and then and double quote. Now I need to join that to, using the ampersand, the lower. Now notice the greater than or equal to will be the same all the way down, but that relative cell reference will move. So each time the formula copies down, it'll see a new lower limit. That's the first condition, comma. Criteria range two, I need the same column again. Click in the top cell, Control Shift, down arrow, F4, comma. Now criteria two. Now if we're asking the question, are you greater than or equal to the lower, it also, as an and logical test, has to be less than or equal to the upper. So in double quotes, less than or equal to and double quotes, and join it to, and I'll use my left arrow to get as a relative cell reference the upper limit. And that formula will work. Close parentheses. Control-Enter. Double-click and send it down. Now I'm going to go to the last cell and hit F2, verifying that all my cell references are working. I should have done that over here, too. F2, that's working there. F2, that's working. F2. So those are all working. Now back up here, F2. That was option number one, count ifs. Now, one advantage of count ifs over the frequency function that we're going to use here is that you actually have complete control over the comparative operators. You could put equal signs or not have the equal signs, which is sometimes the case when you have not an integer value but a continuous variable. Sometimes you have the equal sign on one side but not the other. So count ifs gives you complete control over the comparative operators. But if you're really counting the frequency between an upper and lower limit, and you have the upper limits for each category, then using the frequency function is going to be a little bit easier. Now, there is a twist. The frequency function, you actually have to pre-highlight all of the cells before you enter the frequency array function into the active cell. And then we're going to have to use a special keystroke to get this special array function to work. Now, active cell at the top, that's the light colored cell. I type equals FR, and there's our frequency function. Now, frequency function, all it needs is the data, that's the whole quantity column, and then the bins array. Those are the upper limits. So I'm going to highlight the data array, click in the top, Control Shift Down arrow, and I'm going to use Control Backspace because we do not have to lock those cell references with the dollar signs. When we enter the frequency array function with the special keystroke, the actual same exact formula will automatically go into each cell, comma, bins array. These are the upper limits. Now, when you're using frequency in bins, these upper limits will always be included. And most of the time, that's fine. Cases where the upper limit is not included, then you can't use the frequency function. But that's it. When we close parentheses and enter this, it will automatically calculate the same numbers. Now, there's a number of different array functions in Excel, frequency, line s, transpose function. And these functions deliver multiple answers simultaneously. So if you want those multiple answers to go into multiple cells, you have to use the special keystroke. Control, Shift, and Enter. Now, I'm going to hit Enter and just show you that it's not going to work. It happened to calculate the first category, but not the rest. So very carefully, I'm going to hit F2. And now I'm going to enter it properly with Control, Shift, and Enter. Now, Control, Shift, Enter is us telling Excel that that's a special array function. Immediately, you have to look up to the formula bars. Those curly brackets are automatically put in by Excel. And that means Excel understood that this was an array calculation. All right, so we have either frequency function or count ifs for calculating frequency between an upper and lower limit. Now we can calculate cumulative frequency. 
Now, there's a couple ways we could do this. We could actually point this cell to that. And then in this cell, we could say, please add the latest to the one above. That would be appropriate if you have a really large data set. But this is a small data set. So I'm going to use the sum function with an expandable range. Now I'm going to click in cell I2, shift colon, and close parentheses. Now very carefully, I'm going to put my cursor in the first I12 and hit F4. What I've done is lock the first cell in the range. The second one, I12, because there's no dollar sign there, that 12 will move to 13, 14, 15. So it will be an expandable range as we copy down. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. You can go to any particular cell and hit F2. You can see, sure enough, that is an expandable range. The 12 is locked. But that number, in this case, 16, is not. So when I hit Enter F2, it keeps moving and expanding. There's our cumulative frequency. Now, of course, when we get to the last category, that's the total for everything. Now, percent cumulative. Equal sign, and I'm in a left arrow, divided by, and you can either click on the last total cell here, or you can do it with keyboards, left arrow, control down arrow and then F4 to lock it. Notice the numerator will be each one of the cumulative totals, always compared to the total overall. Control-Enter. Double click and send it down. And of course, the last one is 100% because 409 divided by 409 is 1. Now, I've already applied the percentage number formatting over here on Home using the drop-down percentage with two decimals. Now we can create our chart. Now, I have done other videos on this OJIVE chart, or per percent cumulative frequency. And in other videos, I've done the XY scatter, because we want to attach the line to the X axis at the zero point. But here, I don't really care about that. I just want the categories listed along the horizontal axis, and then these percentages as a line. I'm going to highlight the category column. Using the Control key, I'm going to come over and get the label and our cumulative percentages. Now, as I mentioned earlier in this video, if you try to do this with a pivot table, this particular trick won't work because the pivot table will make a chart based on all the numbers in the pivot table. If you have a single category and a percent cumulative frequency or percent running total calculation as a single pivot table, then of course you can make a chart. Let's go up to Insert. I'm going to use the line. Line is for when we have a category along the horizontal and one number along the vertical axis. And I'm going to select this one, line with markers. Now we're going to do a bunch of things to make this look cool. First thing is I'm going to click on the chart title. And I want to link it to this chart title I have over here. So to link it using a formula, make sure that the solid line is around the outside of the chart title. Type an equal sign, which jumps you up to the formula bar, and then click on the cell M6. We can see our formula up there, and That's enter. Cumulative. Now, normally in a business chart, you probably wouldn't have a title this long. But to be explicit of what this chart is showing, I said percent of transactions that had a quantity less than or equal to the upper limit. Now, I want to come over and I want the percentages not on the vertical axis, but actually right on the line. So I come to the green plus, and I'm going to check data labels. Now, if I click back in the chart, now we have chart junk. I have percentages here and here. So I'm going to click on the vertical axis. With the solid line selected, I use the Delete key. Now, as I'm looking at this, sometimes this is an appropriate label along the horizontal axis. But I'm thinking so that it's less cluttered. I want just the upper limits. So somewhere in the chart, I'm going to disconnect this, because that axis is looking at that category label there. Somewhere in the chart, I'm going to right click Select Data, or you can go up to the Design Select Data. This is the real power for charting. We have complete control. We're allowed to add a new series. Series is the name they use to describe the numbers. We can edit the series or numbers or remove. Ours is fine. Now I want to click and edit the horizontal category. So I click Edit. 
And now I'm going to highlight the upper transaction quantity. Click OK. Click OK. Now, by itself, that is not a good axis because you're like, what are those numbers? Well, I mean, we might get a hint from up here that it says the upper limit, but I want a label down here describing exactly what this is. I'm going to come up to the plus and over to the axis titles. Click that little arrow and say primary horizontal. With the solid line, I'm going to type an equal sign, which jumps me up to the formula bar. And then I'm going to click on the label here, Upper Transaction Quantity, and Enter. Now we know exactly what those numbers mean. Now those horizontal lines are fine. That's a matter of preference. I'm going to click on them. I can see that they're selected, the little dots on the outside, and I'm going to delete them. I'm going to try and add a background color. Right click, Format Chart Area, or you can actually click any element in here and Control-1 will open up the task pane for that particular element. So format chart area. There's the fill bucket, solid fill. Now, I think I had already selected this color. That wasn't the default, but I selected that one right there. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to actually add a black border to the outside. So under here, under border, I'm going to say solid line and make sure black. Now I want to click on the chart title, Control-B to make it bold. Click once on the percentage labels, Control-B. Click on the axis, Control-B. Click on horizontal axis, label, Control-B. Now that's looking pretty good here. And now we can clearly see the meaning of this chart, 75.8% of the transactions from this data set had a quantity of 250 or less. 65.5% of the transactions had a quantity of 200 or less. Now, to emphasize the connection between the upper limit here and this percentage, I want to add a line from each one of the percentages down to the upper limit. I'm going to come over to the plus. And there's something called error bars. Now I want to click on this black triangle to expose and say more options. And over here in the task pane, we see format error bars. Now I only want minus, so it only comes down below the line. And check this out. We don't want percentage, standard deviation, standard error. We want custom. And over here, specify value. I click. And it allows me to put values in here. Now, we do not want positive, so with it highlighted, hit the Delete key. We actually want to do the same thing here, highlight and delete negative error bars. Now I can simply come over and highlight. And notice the proper height will be our percentages, so our percent cumulative frequency. Those will be the heights of those error bars. Click OK. That is pretty cool. Now I want to change the color on those lines. So I go over to the Paint bucket. And for line, I'm going to select something like dark blue. And there we go. There is our OJIVE chart, or percent cumulative frequency. And of course, 100% were for 500 or less. All right, so in this video, we saw how to, with formulas, create the lower and upper limit, a category. We saw how to calculate frequency with count ifs and the array function frequency. We also saw sum function and expandable range for cumulative frequency and then percent cumulative frequency in our line chart with some formatting and some error bars. All right, that was a lot of fun with running total and percent running total. In our next video, we'll see how to do running total and percent running total with DAX formulas in our Power Pivot data model. All right, we'll see you next video.